Welcome to Agent Noob everyone, and let's talk about the massive February patch that will be upon us next week. The developers have released the patch notes a week early for us to take a look, and there are some big changes we need to go through. Let's dive right in. Starting with the general changes, we can all rejoice that animation cancelling will be finally behind us. Now, we don't exactly know how this will be implemented just yet, but we can assume that the DPS will no longer make sense for the players to even bother with it hopefully. Good riddance. Apart from animation cancelling, the patch will also include some high-profile bug fixes. The infamous demo ship bug will be long gone. The palisade wall bug of not being able to be targeted will also be fixed. Trebuchets will have an AoE damage effect when they miss their targets, and scouts will have their cost nerfed by 10 food. All these changes are welcome and are in the right direction. Also, fishing was way too powerful, and it is receiving a big, well-deserved nerf. Both shorefish and deepfish are halved from 1000 to 500 and 2000 to 1000 respectively. Furthermore, the fishing ship's harvest rates have also been decreased from 0.75 to 0.66 and from 1.1 to 1.0 for shorefish and deepfish respectively. Hence, fishing will now last half as long and will be slower to gather from overall. Another OP aspect of the game was Siege, and it's great to see that they're finally being addressed, as there's a long list of changes coming next week. First of all, the formation catch-up additional speed is reduced to 40% to be in line with all other units, so we won't see siege units moving ridiculously quickly to catch up with their allied soldiers. Second, all cavalry except scouts get an additional 10 bonus damage against siege units, so this should help bring down siege units quicker with cavalry now. Third, the Bombards, which were arguably one of the strongest units in the game, get an 80 HP nerf. If we couple this with the added bonus damage from the cavalry, they finally might feel a lot more vulnerable than they used to. 4. Siege weapons now deal their bonus damage against ships, which is a massive change. Currently, getting backwater after losing it is next to impossible in the game's current state. With this change, making a few sprinkles, for example, may give you just enough space to begin reclaiming the waters. It'll be interesting to see how this change plays out, so we'll keep a close eye out on this one. And finally, 4 siege units will have their movement speed nerfed. The Bombard gets a massive 42% movement speed nerf, decreasing its speed from 0.88 to 0.62. Other changes aren't as drastic, but they are significant. Springles will move 14% slower, Mangonels will move 17% slower, and the Nest of Bees will move 16% slower. Overall, great changes across the board as everyone was in unison that siege units were simply too fast in the game. We don't really see any mentions of other siege units in the game, such as the culverins and the rest, but we'll see how those pan out next week. Alright, let's now move on to the civilization specific changes, starting with the Abbasid dynasty. The Abbasids are stuck with a constant age up time due to its unique House of Wisdom mechanic, so the developers are buffing that by 15 seconds for each age. Overall, I think this is a good change, though I personally would rather have some sort of mechanic that gives the player a choice in this. For example, you could pay more resources or garrison villagers in the House of Wisdom to speed up the age up time to give a cost benefit mechanic like the rest of the civilizations. Apart from that, the Abbasids also share some changes with the Delhi Sultanate in the next few ones. The Explosive Dows range is now the intended 2 instead of 1, so with both of these bugs fixed for the demo ships, we should finally see some normal explosions on the seas. Also, Dow's damage will be increased from 8 to 10, which is vital as they were possibly the most underwhelming so far. Water still has a lot of work to do, so the developers will have to keep those incremental changes coming to fine-tune it with time. Interestingly, we also see a significant buff to berries, as their harvest bonus is increased to 35% and berry carry capacity to 13, up from the previous 10. This change could completely change build orders, and sheep versus berries in the early game will be an interesting choice for both of these civilizations. As always, the pros will likely figure this out in no time. Moving on to the Chinese, their clock tower bombard's health is thankfully reduced from 720 to 600. And get this, the official units will no longer be able to supervise landmarks, which is huge. Furthermore, reload drills is also nerfed from 33% to 20%. All these changes were warranted in my opinion, as the Chinese siege were simply too powerful. That said, they do get two additional changes as well, in which the nest of bees will be slightly more effective against water units, though I have to test this one out first before making a conclusion, and a bug of the Imperial officer's cooldown not triggering properly is also addressed. The Holy Roman Empire might be getting to its sweet spot, as their prelates get a significant movement speed buff and range buff. This should help quite a bit in the early game with their economy, as well as later in the game during battles. I will investigate prelates soon to test this one out as well, so stay tuned. The Mongols surprisingly get by rather unscathed in this one, as the only nerf applied to them is on their rating. 
Raids across the board are now nerfed by 25, which is a welcome change. That said, we'll have to keep an eye out on the win rates after February, as the Mongols may not need additional nerfs, especially after the significant buffs other civilizations have been getting the last two patches. And finally, the Rus have just one change, and it's the same as the Chinese one. Their reload time buffing technology from the high armory is nerfed from 33% to 20% as well. Apart from these, the developers also mentioned that public update previews will also be coming soon, as that has been the case for other Age of Empires titles. This is great as we'd be able to catch any significant bugs before they go live as they have in the past. Well, that's pretty much all you need to know about the upcoming February patch that is slated to come out sometime this week. With this patch as well as the spring update slated for April, Age of Empires 4 will be in a decent spot as the majority of the pain points will be addressed. Overall, these are great changes and I hope the developers continue the frequent updates to keep the game fair and fresh. Finally, if you'd like to keep up with all things Age of Empires, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to not miss out on any future videos. As always, thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to torch up siege units with your cavalry after next week's patch and see you all in the next one.